Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this DECA webinar on techniques and tricks to use when working CO2 laser. As said, the official language for both presentation and question will be English. You might send your question by acting on the question function arrow located on the screen you've been using to load to this webinar. All the questions will be answered at the end of the webinar and in the following day. All of them will be taken care by Professor Paolo Bonan, our speaker. For technical and logistic questions, DECA will provide detail directly. This webinar will be led by Professor Paolo Bonan, dermatologist, ESLD key officer, EADV laser task force member, adjunct professor of laser at Plastic Surgery University of Siena, and in charge of laser cutaneous cosmetic and plastic surgery unit at Villa Donatello Clinic, Florence, Italy. It's with pleasure that I then pass the word on to Professor Bonan for the beginning of the webinar. Thank you, Simone, and uh, good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, or good evening to those participants who uh, live uh, in uh, other time zones. Uh, before going into the agenda, I'd like to express my gratitude to staff at DECA, but also I'd like to thank the scientific director, Dr. Giustino Gallo, the area managers, the friends, collaborators, uh, in particular, Irene Bini and uh, Joanna Norgren, and all the friends that uh, work in Elendeca. Thanks to all of you, this webinar was made possible. In, uh, before even going into the core of this webinar, uh, I wish to urge you all attendees to actively participate to the webinar with the questions, comments, thoughts that you can write down, you can note down, and we'll register with the, with the chat and we'll answer at the end of the webinar. In today's agenda, uh, DECA CO2 laser platform will be outlined. This is one of the studies that we performed where we uh, reported the experience gained over three decades of this uh, laser. And uh, we report even the technical developments of uh, this particular platform that has reached an uh, elevated degree of accuracy thanks to DECA's ongoing and relentless uh, effort to uh, improve uh, its instrument and line of products and equipments but also thanks to the constant feedback that we received from you fellow physicians in our courses during DEC Academy in Italy and in other countries in the world. Uh, we and uh, our patients share one common goal, that is uh, the improvement of some cutaneous conditions and rejuvenation of photoaging and chronoaging disorders by exploiting the capability of the CO2 laser to be absorbed by water, that is the, the chromophore of this laser. For uh, attaining and pursuing this goal, we need to be uh, always uh, and share and exploit the particular features of this platform that are represented by the characteristics that you are seeing in this slide. The use of the fractional photothermolysis, DECA laser rigid features, CO2 laser operating parameters, CO2 laser applications, and of course, question and answer in the sharing that we do normally in our courses. So thanks even to all of you for sharing with us your experience your parameters and your protocols. 
Fractional photothermolysis is a treatment that allows to obtain remarkable results with the minimal downtime. We know this because we spare tissue for faster healing process. We exploit the thin and spaced column of thermal damage. We have a microabrating effect and thermal effect in the tissue. We have uh, three main parameters that we have to consider the power, the pulse duration with its shade that is unique with DECA product with a smart site. And we don't find in the market different pulse shape. And the third, the dot spacing between the column of light. With this, we can get quicker dermis and epidermis regeneration with reduced downtime. In this slide, you can see a skin histological examination after the treatment. You see the, the crater that we created with the fractional. And after three, four days, there is a, a dramatic increase of mitosis of the suprabasal keratinocytes, quite similar to the psoriasis, accelerated turnover, very important to get a perfect wound healing. In this uh, basin, that is represented by the traditional historical smart side dot, we can see inside the other models that we have. So the smart side square, smart side touch, and smart side punto or tetra in United States. Uh, another important features of this uh, platform is the pulse shape design. This is very, very important because uh, we can choose between these uh, different path shapes. And uh, with this path shape, we have different waveforms of the ablation areas, different lateral thermal damage distribution, different ablation profiles, as we'll see later on in uh, the pictures. This is a corresponding uh, ex vivo uh, histological samples, where you can see the different pulses, D pulse, S pulse, H pulse. Why we use uh, the three pulses? In uh, the first, the so called uh, SP pulse, we have uh, the capability to go into the superficial uh, layers of the skin. You can treat this part of the tissue. With the D pulse, we can go deeper with the ablation crater and the thermal diffusion cap capability. And with the HP pulse, we get a really cold ablation capability that we exploit with a free end and even with a fractional scanner, as uh, you will appreciate in the following slides. Another important feature is a smart stack function. Smart stack function is the capability to drill a skin like a hammer and getting the penetration depth and the ablation of the skin, maintaining the preset uh, thermal diffusion by using the pulse duration. You see the comparison between uh, stack one and stack five. We can get the same total energy, in this case, uh, 30 millijoule, but reducing the erythema of the skin, but getting the same results. So it's a safer modality to have the results. This uh, the comparison between stack one and stack five. You see the great capability to go into the depth. So smart stack can be used to tailor erythema on the patient. Another important feature is the uh, delivery mode normal interlaced and smart track. Uh, for 90% of the cases that I use, uh, where I use uh, the scanner is uh, I adopt the normal. Sometimes to be cool, cold in the treatment, I use smart track. That is like a sort of uh, randomized modality to deliver the energy. And there is innovative mode, that is the spray mode that is present in Punto and Tetra. Okay, you see here, randomized capability to 
deliver the dots in the scan. You see, we can do this with Punto and Tetra. Four models, smart side dot, historical. The previous one was fantastic at the very beginning. And then the innovations, smart side two, touch and Punto or Tetra in United States version. Which kind of uh, which kind of uh, end pieces we can use with this platform? The free hand with seven inch and one point inches that we'll see later on, and the fractional scanner. And even the action on the scan, we can have a vaporization, the incision, and stimulation. The fractional scanner with the free hand operate parameters. We can have, uh, you can pay attention to the power, pulse shape, frequency expressed in Hertz and emission. With uh, We can do this with uh, all the models and platform. In this slide, you can see the, a part, a list of indications that we can vaporize with good clinical results and reduce this of bad scaring with the innovative uh, protocols that we uh, prepare over the last decade. And at a glance, the part of the clinical cases that we, we treat. This is a very important image because uh, give us the opportunity to evaluate even what we have to do during the procedure. So looking at the layers, the ablation crater in one point, carbonization, coagulation, and hyperthermia. Why we have to pay attention to this? Because during the treatment, it's very important to remove the necrotic debris. Each session is passed because otherwise we risk to amplify the thermal diffusion in the, in the surrounding areas. You have to remove the necrotic debris as you can see in one of the videos that we presented. Well, CO2 traditional surgical and piece allow us to vaporize, and you can see the, the results after one month. The same detail for pigmentation. You can note down even the, the parameters that we can have with the, with the new model, smart side two, touch, punto, and tetra. We use a freehand mode with a, a seven inch, of course, the largest pot size that allow us to vaporize the lesion. With, we can use the HP or SP pulse and the power around one watt with a frequency of 20 Hertz. With the previous one, as smart side dot, we use freehand mode with SP pulse level two, a frequency 20. This is a comparison of the old and the new ones. This is a video. You can see here uh, the skin that is not terrible with the sun damage, but we have some actinic keratosis and the capability to vaporize in the very superficial way by using SP pulse. We vaporize and we pass one time, then we remove the necrotic debris with the wet gauzes, what is very important. You see the capability to cover an area where we can see some discoloration with some damage, some uh, hypochro hypochromia or hypochromia and uh, is not so terrible, but it's definitely sun damage scan. In this case, we have uh, a thick uh, seborrheic keratosis. Uh, we use uh, EMLA. Normally, we apply the EMLA with the free hand and with the refractional refract scanner one hour before, and uh, the topical uh, anesthetic start taking effect in uh, at 10 minutes, and, and we can. Uh, apply in the second time after 30 minutes and we we can uh, and we'll see that the skin we will feel that uh, the skin uh, will get number and number and the, as the time goes on and so we can treat even this thick lesion with a very low sensitivity uh, from the patient in this case we treated uh, this uh, superficial linear verrucous nevus and uh, in the past, uh, when we didn't have this kind of uh, technology, we got not so good scarring. Now we obtain a good results in terms of uh, uh, wound dealing, 
you see, you can note down, uh, in this case, uh, the parameters, SP pulse level 1.5 and 10 Hz with the previous uh, smart side dot, and free end mode, HP pulse, power 0.7 and frequency 10 Hz with the new systems. This is a meaningful uh, case where we can appreciate uh, the treatment of sebaceous nebus that is uh, where we have a sebaceous nebus that is like a plug that uh, uh, interfere with the hair regrowth. But after the treatment, we have the completely and dramatic hair regrowth. That means that we are uh, working with a very delicate manner in uh, not teaching and not heating the vertical follicle, but only the lesion in the skin. You see the parameters that we use with the new system. HP mode, power one, one and 50 Hz of frequency. Well, this is a huge lesion that we treat in two different modalities. This huge rhinophema has been treated in an operating room in the surgical theater in general sedation. And we took more than three hours because we have to remodel the nose to get the, the original silhouette of the nose. What is interesting, that is the front view side view and uh, the bottom view, uh, we can appreciate the total restoring of the texture and even the capability to uh, better breathe from the patient because we can vaporize at the best by using these parameters. First, we treat with a vascular laser, could be pulse dilator with this kind of parameters, 6.5 joules per square centimeter and 0.5 milliseconds as uh, the pulse duration, or in the YAG, Fluence uh, 100 joules per square centimeter, two sub pulses, the first five milliseconds, the second 17 milliseconds with a delay of 17 milliseconds. The spot is five millimeter. After one month, we can have a second phase that is represented by the surgical treatment. You see the parameters, freehand mode SP pulse, level three with the previous smart side dot, and with the new, we have SP pulse, but two watt and 80 Hertz as a frequency. This is very, it's very interesting because, because we have done a lot of mistakes in 90s when we didn't have this kind of uh, possibility, technical improvement. So at that time we have best scarring, white scarring, not so good like uh, we can have not right now. This is another case, very interesting that we got in the past, uh, is the ranophema in women, very rare. So we treated with the pulse dye laser before, and then we treated with a CO2. And you see another case, fibro Anjoma, we treated first with pulse dye and second phase with the CO2, perfect restoration of the texture. Dermal nebus of eyebrows. We treat these uh, dermal nebus in one session with a free hand and SP pulse, and we got good results and hair regrowth. Lateral, in the lateral of the wing of the nose, we have uh, the complete vaporization of uh, the dermal nebus and 20 days, one month, you see the results. The nebal nebus of the middle of the cheek, uh, very, very delicate area, because we are in the middle, is evident. So we use uh, these uh, parameters with the new one, free hand mode, HP, uh, 0.8 watt as a power and uh, 20 Hz as a frequency. In the previous, we use SP pulse, uh, and 1.5 level and uh, 50 Hz as frequency. Well, this is a, a video very representative because uh, apparently it's not so it's easy, but not so easy because uh, it's on the uh, line of the wings. 
and if we start to vaporize the top of the dermal nebus, then we reduce the thickness. What is important is to know how we have to uh, carry on with the procedure after the, the first pass. It's important to remove with the wet gauzes and so that you can focus our select, uh, selected uh, uh, action on the skin and we finish to vaporize uh, the dermal nebus. You can see in uh, the side view uh, the perfect restoration of the skin. It's very important even to understand the end point. It's one of the most important problem when to stop our procedure. And if you note in the lateral side, uh, in the lateral view, side view, you can see that you have a very modest depression of the skin that you can see here. Uh, we have to get this result, this end point. We cover sometimes with a, a sort of hydrocolloid dressing. Seborrheic keratosis, but in particular areas, very delicate. The cartilago is uh, very delicate, so we must contain the heating in the, the skin, not transmit this uh, heating in the deeper uh, tissues like artilago, and we can vaporize with the results after one month. Another case and the parameters. You can see on the left, SP mode 2.0, frequency 20 Hertz and level 1.5 with the previous smart side dot. On the right, the parameters with the HP or SP pulse and power 0.8 and frequency 20 Hertz. Please note down, write down these parameters because they are very important with the free hand. Well, carry on with, uh, with our cases, xanthelasmas. We treat very uh, often this kind of lesion. Please appreciate how we can get uh, uh, results with the maintaining even in inner cantus of the eyelid, the uh, texture, the laxity of the skin without any best scarring. And this is another results with the parameters on the left and on the right. On the left with the Masai dot, we use, we start with the 2.5 and then we finish with the level one. We start with the 20 Hertz, we finish at 10 Hertz. With the new platform we use normally, we start with HP pulse and we finish with S pulse, but using one watt and frequency at 20 Hertz. Well, we have here another video that is recommended to, to observe with attention because we can appreciate not only the pass, the passes that we use, uh, the safety measurements that we use for adopting the cornea shields, the metal cells cornea shields, and uh, thank you. And uh, you see the vaporization of the xanthelasmas that uh, you start from the peripheral part then to go into the center you can even coagulate uh, the vessel in the hole where we enter with uh, with the intra lesional anesthesia and then we can carry on with the vaporization of uh, the xanthelasmas and you can see the uh, capability to vaporize delicately and gently we pull uh, gently the skin just to see it, to evidence the entire lesion. At a certain point, we stop and we wet, we, we, we scratch with, with the wet gauzes and we carry on to treat and vaporize the yellow tissue in the middle of the lesion. After this, we get a sort of strawberry appearance of uh, the remaining lesion that is considered the end point of this vaporization. It's very important to know this because we don't know when we have to stop the vaporization. Vaporize delicately, but then after removing the necrotic debris, you can see this strawberry appearance. And then you can move circularly in the edges of the lesion. Well, now we have uh, to uh, continue to with uh, 
other consideration with the new smart side uh, platform. We can do now the incision by using 1.5 inches. So the smaller spot size that allow us to use the end piece like a, a knife, a diamond of light that allow us to treat a lot of uh, uh, indications and uh, uh, cutaneous conditions. On the left, you see from the abdominoplasty to the through the blepharoplasty until the breast augmentation by cutting the periareolar area and then the um, uh, just the, the treatment of uh, the uh, lipoma. Freehand operating parameters. We have to pay attention to the power, pass shape, frequency, and emission, as in the previous one at seven inches. This picture is very significant because uh, uh, we can appreciate by using HP pulse, freehand mode, uh, freehand and piece, and 1.5 or 2 spot size, we can appreciate the uh, sharp demarcation of uh, the cutting area of the incision. This gives us the opportunity to operate in the clean theater without uh, bleeding or with a minimal bleeding. Uh, this is another case where we combine different end pieces. It is uh, the advantage of the platform. So we can move from one to the other end piece, from uh, the uh, free end end piece 1.5 inch for cutting to the seven uh, free end end, end piece uh, for vaporizing some lesions that are present in the eyelid to the scanner for the fractionated um, treatment of the of the uh, eyelids. So in the upper eyelids we have a laser blepharoplasty for the incision. And then we have lower transcontinuous blepharoplastic following by fractional blepharotitan with the scanner. But this video is uh, uh, very uh, important because um, show us, uh, is our staff and uh, then the operating room, the pre-operative uh, procedure is uh, the same that the traditional with the knife, then we can uh, use uh, for the upper blepharo the local anesthesia, and then you can cut the uh, marker that you have done with the, with the marker. You see the perfect incision and the modest bleeding that we have. After this, uh, we can remove the lozenge that we get after this uh, incision. And uh, it's important to evaluate how we delicate this incision is important even in terms of uh, uh, the, the type of scarring that we get. We don't see any sign at the end after 20, 20, 20 days or even one month or even one year. We put the stitches as usual. So we, we, we can see uh, this kind of procedure, but we can adopt any kind of uh, stitches application. Then we perform the transconjunctival blepharoplasty. We can use intralesional uh, anesthesia, or you can use a local regional anesthesia, and you have to pull out the fat after the incision of uh, the conjunctiva. Of course, you have to be skilled to know it perfectly the anatomy of the area, so the nerves and uh, the vessels that we have in this in this part. You pull out all the fat. You coagulate the fat, you clamp sometimes some vessels that are open, and at the end, you use the fractional scanner by pulling down the skin a little bit, because uh, normally when we remove the fat, we leave an empty area, and so as a consequence, we have a laxity of the skin. So for that reason, we finish the treatment with uh, the uh, with uh, the fractional scanner. This video uh, is very significant because we can see uh, how sometimes we need to be very precise by uh, clipping the, pinching the, the, the skin and obtain a cleavage from the orbicular muscle. Please uh, look at the, how we hold uh, the end piece 
at 45 degree angle. This is very important, how we move, how we hold the end piece. We are talking about tips and tricks. It's one of the most important tips and tricks that we can do. Please hold the end pieces in this way. On the other side, we, the opposite angle we can use. Exactly. Well, of course, we can manage the entire, the entire treatment of the or orbital areas. Of course, we can treat even the, the so-called uh, dark circle that is uh, uh, often seen, especially in South America and uh, Middle East and even in Far East. So we can treat uh, dark circle with the fractional CO2 and we get very good results. Of course, we can use blepharoplasty and uh, other procedure in the periorbital area. Stimulation, we can perform with a scanner, a scanner emitting the fractional scanner. And uh, so the main application of fractional CO2 laser are rejuvenation, treatment of scars with atrophic, hypertrophic keloids and disfiguring scars, and actinic keratosis and cancer, no melanoma cancer, of course. This is at a glance, uh, the good clinical results that we can have uh, with this uh, indication, the clinical indication. Why? Because we biostimulate the skin with the fractional. Uh, in this slide, we are, I'm really proud and I, I really want to thank my staff uh, for, for getting these results. We won uh, four trophies in uh, four edition of uh, AMWC uh, Congress. Uh, what is important that we won the trophy by using fractional CO2 in each of these cases that you see here. The first, depression after injection of, of corticosteroids and the atrophy. The second, the scars. The third, face syndrome that you will see later on. And uh, the scars in the self-inflicted lesion. The fractionated is characterized by microblated skin remodeling and uh, a lot of column of light. And you see here the dot that, that are the roof of the column of light that penetrate into the depth, depending of the parameters you use. And you see here a lot of parameters, spot size, spacing, cooling, pitch means fractional, dual time, spray mode in the punto and tetra, stack, pulse shape, and radio frequency. Focusing on the pulse shape, you have to take in mind that we have uh, three main parameters. The first two, we have power stacking, are strictly related to ablation capability. The third, dual time, is related to the thermal diffusion. But there is a fourth parameter, the pulse shape, and in particular, DP, that we use in the 90% of cases of fractional treatment that allow us to go into the depth and stimulate into the depth and microblate in the deeper layer. You see the, the pulse shape design and the D pulse modes, the great capability to go into the depth and the ablation crater, very, very deep. Well, we publish a lot uh, over the past decade, but uh, I want to focus our attention in the, these two studies where it's evident uh, that after the treatment, the two main cytokines, BFGF and uh, TGF beta 1, that are balanced in the wound dealing, are moved only and above all with the lower parameters at third, third days and 30th days. You see, there is a movement only with the lower parameters. What does it mean? That when we use the fractional scanner, we have to use not the stronger parameters, but the proper combination of parameters in the right way, in the protocol that we uh, get normally in our experience and we share with you now, but even in DEC Academy that we have done up to now. There is a a very innovative uh, uh, procedure that is called uh, cool pill. The cool pill can be done with the spray mode, uh, uh, especially with the spray mode that we have in Smatsai Punto and Tetra, that allows for consecutive scans to be delivered very quickly and with random borders 
so as to reduce emphasis on skipped on overlapped area. So we can avoid the marcation line. So it's a great uh, technical advance of this uh, uh, platform. Uh, we have different levels of, uh, um, uh, can be soft or not so, or less soft, uh, soft less uh, in the users. You see now the cool peeling, you have a pseudo random scanning and the cool peel allow us to, to treat very superficially the skin. We are using HP mode. HP mode is uh, the uh, cold mode, you know, and uh, we use in particular in the cool peel. The cool peel uh, uh, lead to these results. Thanks to the Dr. Karinis that uh, give us uh, to uh, the opportunity to compare our results with their results. And we get the, the, the same results uh, uh, as you can see here in this picture. What is interesting is that after the treatment, this is our patient, we have we have is not dramatic but uh, we have uh, it's a definitely some damage skin where we have some dyschromia here we have some vertical lines some crappy skin and uh, hyperpigmentations and some laxity we our cool peel that we can adopt even with smart size square and uh, touch of course by using hp pulse and uh, stack one you have to take in mind this uh, we can have a very um, not so aggressive uh, treatment, but the results lead us to this uh, um, very interesting uh, lighter skin. And sometimes, if you go here, you can see even in the uh, in this area in the marionette lines, in uh, the uh, smile lines, animation lines are reduced, and even in the jaw area, there is a Modest tightening, the the texture is completely removed. That is completely Im improved uh, the and uh, removed the the old skin after this procedure. And what is interesting after this procedure is that uh, the recovery time is pretty smooth, and uh, we move uh, very rapidly to the uh, into the uh, new skin. Going back to not to the cooling, and the, but uh, the the, the, the so-called uh, cool peel, but using the fractional in the, by using the DP mode in 90% of the cases, we can get a tighten of the skin, a very firming um, skin, even in the neck, very delicate area. You see the seborrheic arthrosis indicates that we we are in the, the same point of, after the procedure seven months out the treatment, completely restoring the skin, even another case. Well, you see the parameters. With the new platform, we have uh, completely tightening of the skin with the DP pulse, power eight, approximately around eight, dual time 600 microseconds, dose spacing 1000 micron and stack two. With the old one, the traditional smart side dot, we got uh, the results with SP pulse, power around 14 watts, dual time 600 microseconds, and dot spacing 500, stack two. The stack two even with the previous uh, platform. Sometimes we can uh, combine three modalities, fractional CO2, Radio frequency simultaneously emitted with, with, the, with the laser and laser lipolysis, characterized by the injection of uh, local anesthesia and then the use of fiber uh, 300 micron and NDIAG with one of the products of uh, DECA, that is smart lipo. You see the, the results, the blue line indicates the original position of the laxity of the skin. And then after the treatment, after the procedure, uh, three or four months out the treatment. Of course, in this case, the platysma must be not relaxed, not relaxed. Going back to the fractional CO2 in the treatment of the upper lip, we have the tightening of the skin. We 
uh, remodel the silhouette of uh, the lips. We still see after one month some a pixel image in the upper lip, but good results in terms of tightening. And this is uh, a passion through the entire process of the session. One session, two session, third session, sorry, there is a mistake, and four session. You see the progressive uh, smooth area, firm skin. So fantastic uh, results in terms of uh, tightening. And we have these results, uh, uh, the same results that we got with the prior traditional resurfacing laser but they, which took uh, more several uh, several weeks or months in the recovery time. Now we can get the same results with a short recovery time, shorter recovery time. I would say that um, we can get um, a peak redness uh, around uh, 24, 48 hour, eight hours, but as seen maybe in this case, in the periorbital rejuvenation, we published in 2012 in JDB the fractional treatment of the eyelid. And you see the sequence of the event on the appearance. Immediately after the treatment, immediately after the procedure, we have a, a, a peak swelling that is around 24 or 48 hours and a peak redness around 24 to 72 hours or sometimes four, four days, but uh, rapidly uh, taper off in new pink, pink skin and firm skin. This is one of the cases that we publish in a 40 years old uh, female. We treated and you see the treatment in the pre-operatively picture and immediately after before and after. You see the tightening of the skin and uh, normally the uh, recovery time is pretty smooth if you use the, the proper parameters. And you see the detail on one side and the other side. So dramatic tightening of the skin. You must consider that we are not using any incision in this case. Another case, we have non symmetric upper eyelids before and we treated only one eyelid with the results. So we lose the enfolding and laxity of the skin. This is a, a magnification of the detail. In other case, with the closed eyes, the tightening of the skin, acne, scar, acne scars. So acne scars is one of the favorite indication. They are good candidate to be treated with a fractional. This is a, a article that is in press in the Springer Verba, Verba uh, book, in one of the chapter of this important Springer publication. And uh, it's important to evaluate the improvement of the skin, the atrophic scars, you know, that we have different. I speak, both scar, rolling, and so on. In this picture, in this video, sorry, you can see the high scan dot plus radio frequency in mild acne scars. You can see that we can treat uh, the entire area where we can note a lot of uh, a depressed scar. What is important is to treat the patient with a laser in the, the cold situation, not when there is uh, acne in the inflammation phase, only in the post acne scar, we can use the, the treatment. Otherwise, we risk to have a flare-up, so the recurrence of uh, the acne in the inflammation phase. We can treat the roller acne scars with the parameters. You see on the left, the new, param the new parameters with the new platform, DP pulse as usual, power 10, dual time 800 microseconds, dot spacing at 700 microns, stack two, radio frequency 30 watts and dual time three seconds. With the previous 
glorious smart side dot. We use the SP Pulse power 12 watts, 1000 microseconds, and dot spacing 500 microseconds. Microns, stack two, as usual. This I speak, Agnes cards, and the results. I think it's very important. In, in terms of tips and tricks, uh, I feel to recommend to you the use of uh, the free hand and scanner in the same session, because we can uh, have uh, in our armamentarium a lot of uh, strategies that you can see in this slide, but we prefer in our protocols to use the laser. How use the laser? This is uh, one of the example when you use the free hand to vaporize the edge of uh, the deeper acne scars, the deeper depressions, in particular, the surrounding areas of the depression. Why is so important? Because we can combine the free hand. So the surgical mode for vaporizing, for ablating, ablating the edge, the wall of uh, the uh, atrophies, but then you can use the fractional in the same time. This is an example. You see on the right with the blue circle, the edge that is has been that we, we, we treated with, with the vaporization mode and the free hand as P pulse. And on the left in this point, we still see the fractional dot because we combine the two modalities in the same session. First fractional to stimulate and we will see the results in two months because you know that uh, for getting new collagen from collagen type one to collagen type three, new elastic fibers and so on, we need uh, more than one month. So we have to wait. In the meantime, we treat with the surgical laser the edge so that you can have a double uh, action on the scan. That is very interesting as a tip, as a trick in the treatment of acne scars, but not only. This is the jellyfish atrophies. The scar is uh, interesting to note how it's important to get this fractional laser and uh, tight the skin in this area. This is a synergy with the new technologies. Very often, we combine fractional and pulse dye in many cases of uh, scars. Atrophies represented by stretch marks. Uh, this is very uh, significant case where we have the stretch mark here, we treated, but we got even another effect. Of course, is an anecdotal case, but we have a sort of passes. It's not surgical passes, but it's important to see how we can tighten the skin, not only in terms of improvement of the stretch marks, but even the uh, uh, to um, have a very firm skin after the procedure. With the, with the stretch marks, we, we get very good results. Not in terms that complete restoration of the normal skin, but in terms of uh, narrowing the uh, stretch marks uh, so that the final results in terms of appearance is very, very nice, is very good, and the compliance of the patient is very high. This is an example where we have not only the improvement of uh, the stretch marks, but even the increase in the tone of the skin. You can see here in the periumbilical area the, the, the results. These are the technique and the parameters. On the left, DP pulse, power 10, dual time 800, dot spacing 500, stack three or two, depend on the, of, uh, the type of skin. Uh, in the, with the radio frequency, we use 30 watts and uh, three seconds and as dual time. With the previous one, we use SP pulse, power 12 uh, watt, dual time 1000 microsecond, dot space in 500 microsecond, mi micron, sorry, and stack two. 
this is one of the example. You see, the idea here is to square line the uh, to draw the square to draw the square uh, in the skin following the stretch marks. You can uh, reduce a little bit even the percentage of the area of the square, and so that you can you can follow the stretch along the the and in the entire area. This is a very interesting uh, uh, study that we are publishing in uh, Journal of Cosmetic Dermatology, and uh, the co is about the combination of the fractional CO2 laser with the microwaves. Microwaves that uh, is one of the new product of DECA. The name is Onda. It's very promising. It's already a confirmation because we are using uh, Onda uh, last uh, three three years with very good results. In the case of uh, postpartum abdominal laxity with a lot of uh, stretch marks in the skin, we, we prefer to combine the two ones. You see here the 3D measurement with the quantificator is one of the uh, modality that we have uh, uh, in our clinic. And you see the 3D, the capability to have a measurement of the gift and even the change in the volume that give us the opportunity to reduce this, uh, stubborn fat and to evaluate the tightness of the skin. You see one of the case, reducing the fat and tight the skin. And here, we have the results in this combination before and after. On the plus uh, smart side. Here we have uh, another video where we show you how to deliver the energy on the fat. Before with Onda, and then after one month, more or less, we perform the treatment with uh, the smart side two in this case, emitting laser and simultaneously radio frequency. You see, we have no or minimal overlapping. This is valid for any kind of treatment, even on the face resurfacing or any other parts of the, the body, the neck and décolleté. This is the, the, the procedure that is always the same. And then we continue to cover the entire area where we have the laxity and stretch marks. Well, you see one of the results. I put this slide just to show you the, the sign of the fork with the radio frequency that is indicating that we use a microwave fraction and radio frequency. And you see here the combination. Well, scars and keloids, uh, they are very important issues. Uh, we treat uh, uh, very often combining the laser, the fractional laser, uh, with other lasers, depend, depending on the type of scars we have to treat. This is one of the cases where we are really, really proud to treat this patient. There are self-inflicted uh, lesion with the following best scarring, red scarring, sometimes with a very thick lesion, fibrotic lesion, before the treatment where we combine pulse dye laser, vascu, from DECA and fractional CO2, smart side two. And you see after the procedure, after the first procedure with the pulse dye laser, one month of interval apart, second treatment with the fractional CO2, and then the results. You see, uh, we are really proud because uh, the psychiatrist that uh, follow the passion call us to thanks because we contribute to the balance, the psychological balance of the patient. You see here the 3D images and the evaluation of the chromophore that is uh, uh, improved after the procedure with the pulse dye laser and fraction. Well, you see the parameters. On the left, uh, the scanner with the P pulse, power eight, dual time 800 microseconds and 500 as uh, the um, dot spacing, stack two. On the, the right, you see the uh, 10 millimeter as end pieces, pulse duration 0.5 milliseconds and fluence around eight joules per square centimeter. 
another case where we treated the, with a combination of pulse dye plus fractional CO2. This was uh, uh, the cutting, the, the passion, uh, cutted the, the skin with a knife, incidentally, of course, and we got the results at the end with a very, very good results. And this is the 3D images. Well, the parameters are the same. You see on the left, DP pulse, 10 watt, 800 microseconds as dual time, 700 microns, stack tree, 30 watts as radio frequency, and three seconds in dual time radio frequency. On the right, with the previous, we uh, used uh, scanner dot mode with SP pulse, power 12, dual 10, 1000, dot spacing 500 microns, and stack two. Face syndrome is very meaningful. The name is Sylvia, and with face syndrome is considered one of the most common neurocutaneous vascular disorders in childhood. We used a lot of lasers in the, the improvement, in the treatment of this uh, uh, girl, and with the several Zeta Plus surgical treatment, we are also performed with using CO2, surgical and piece in, and high pulse uh, mode with 1.5 inches. So we cut it several times, but you use mainly the fractional CO2 laser with other vascular laser, as you can see in this uh, light. But at the end, we, we got these results. We went from a state of total hopelessness to restoring self-confidence and esteem, allowing the girl full social recognition. Another case, very interesting and uh, significant, a severe case of a census post-birth care that we treated with a fraction of CO2. So we uh, restored not only the flexibility of the skin, it was at the very beginning, was a very hard skin, but even the oval was improved and the, the appearance so much uh, we we uh, even um, use the fraction of plus lipophilic is another procedure another product that we adopt in this kind of uh, um, clinical cases in the post burning scar and uh, the leg that was not capable to stretch after the treatment was able to stretch so the more flexibility after the treatment after the procedure uh, we are approximately 2 months out the treatment in this case, we got even the possibility for the boy who has suffered severe burns to be on the cutwalk. We are physicians, so we are really proud for this result, even from psychological point of view. The other application are the pregmalignancy in the sense of non-melanoma pregmalignancy. You see, in the literature, we have uh, a lot of studies in skin cancer. But just to show you what we can do, we can uh, treat with the free hand uh, the sun, sun damaged lesions. You see some hyperchromia, some uh, crappy skin. Uh, the, the, the skin is uh, thinner than the normal, so it's not dramatic, but it's, uh, we have uh, it's def definitely some damaged skin. So we treat it with, uh, with the free hand but we can even treat with a fractional. We can treat with a fractional. The fractional CO2 is capable to renovate the skin, even at the molecular level, because sometimes we treat with a fractional, even decollete and the face, where we pass the fractional, normally with the purpose to improve uh, the cosmetical uh, appearance. We have even a sort of uh, rejuvenation at the molecular level. So the number or the percentage of the beta cell carcinoma that we have uh, in the skin, usually in the before the treatment, we uh, don't see any recurrency after the fractional. So maybe we have uh, even a sort of rejuvenation at molecular level. This is a very interesting because it's one of the cases where we use a fractional plus pulse dye, but the fractional is used like a sort of uh, adjuvant, a sort of uh, helping laser to the pulse dye. It's well known that pulse dye laser is used and is uh, used, uh, is one of the tools that we use in uh, the basal cell carcinomas. You see here two BCC 
in the first treatment, we open the roof of the area so that we can use the pulse di dye laser with a typical purpura. And you see the results after three, after, sorry, after three uh, months. Uh, this is one of uh, the uh, BCC that we treated. It's very important to highlight that we don't treat with the laser any kind of basal cell carcinomas. We have to select. We need the, the inclusion criteria that are the BCC must be less than one centimeter, one centimeter and a half. They are not ulcerative BCC. They must be in particular areas and uh, that are not the eyelids, for example, or the scalp. And we have to vaporize the, the lesion. The lesion, uh, you, if, if you know, you mark the area 0.5 centimeter, one centimeter out of the clinical evidence of the, uh, the tumor. We vaporize the lesion until we get the end point. Uh, this is a valid for especially young people that are around 50 or 60 years old because they don't want to have uh, any disfiguring scar at the end of the treatment. Uh, so we can uh, get double goal. The first, if you be very effective. The second is uh, uh, to be, uh, to be uh, uh, conservative in the sense of uh, the cosmetic results, because we and our passion uh, have one common goal, to be precise, time effective, and above all, uh, to ensure safety all the time. So with this kind of procedure, we can do all this uh, target, all this goal. You see, we need to remove uh, the necrotic debris as I already explained in the previous uh, slides, until you get the final steps of uh, uh, this treatment. An important slide here. So in the pre-operative evaluation, treatment and post-op uh, treatment. First of all, uh, we have to consider that uh, before the treatment, we start to use only the topical for reducing the uh, number and so we, we, we get number and number and number as uh, the time goes on when we apply uh, the topical. So we apply the topical one hour before. When we use the day of the treatment, the antivirus, normally acyclovir, we can use a cooling zimmer together for reducing the pain sensation. And uh, uh, immediately after the, during the procedure, we have to remove uh, scratching with the wet gauzes. And what is, is important to apply is high saline gauzes immediately after the treat, immediately after the procedure, uh, fractional or freehand. Then we use antibiotic cream in the first four or five days. And then it's very important to use any kind of moisturizers and rege regenerating cream. In the United States, they use um, aquaphor. They can use uh, thermal cream like uh, Aven or uh, the French uh, the French company, Aven or uh, La Roche, or we can have uh, even other other cases where we use, uh, we can use is on our choice, of course. I never use oral antibiotic unless we are treating very, very large extensive surgical uh, indication. In the case of acne scars, you have to stop any kind of isotretinoin treatment uh, one month before the treatment. We must be uh, very, very cold in the treatment and the skin must present no inflammation where we treat with the fractional CO2 and with the free hand. Complications, mistakes and side effects. One of the most common mistake is the herpes simplex. Normally, if there is a positive history in the anamnesis or herpes simplex, or we are, when we are very aggressive with the fractional, we are eating a lot, the skin is like sunburning. 
So we need to prevent by giving antivirus uh, drug for preventing this situation of this, where we have multifocal herpes simplex. This is one of the most common side effects that unwanted effects that we get. Well, in conclusions, uh, we have uh, to consider parameters knowledge, biological tissue response awareness, and clinical treatment expertise. And I would say that uh, DECA CO2 smart site is a significant breakthrough in the laser treatment of the skin, whether it's uh, uh, aging changes, uh, hyperpigmentations, acne scars, any kind of uh, dermatological lesions, and uh, no melanoma, skin cancer, some, some selective skin cancer, and even wrinkles. This significant breakthrough allows us to treat the patient in the safety manner with a very good clinical results. And I think that this breakthrough has changed the way of physician to approach the skin treatment with a, with a surgical laser. With this uh, on the left, with this uh, significant uh, uh, picture in these uh, difficult days, in our days, that uh, I really want to thank you for your attention. And I think we can move on to uh, the uh, uh, question and answer session. Thank you for your attention. again to be so many to participate in the uh, webinar. Uh, we've been receiving in the meantime a lot of questions uh, touching each of them on the topics that Professor Bonan was so clearly and exhaustively explaining to us throughout the entire course of the explanation. Uh, most of these um, are actually uh, about um, acting scars. Most of them are mostly about the parameters. And uh, from uh, the far eastern countries, many of them are requiring uh, details about the management of BIH patients. Some of them uh, we would like to give an answer to right now in this session of question and answer. It's surely how to manage the PIH in ethnic uh, and Asian skin types. Yeah. Uh, before <clears throat> closing this session and uh, answer to your comment, your tom your thoughts, let me thank uh, uh, warmly the scientific director again, Dr. Justino Gallo, and of course the general director, Dr. Paolo Salva Salvadeo, for making this webinar possible. Thank you very much, all the staff and the friends in uh, LM. So we are waiting for the question and comments so we can answer. So we might, um, we might start exactly with these questions, Professor Bonan. How can we manage the PIH in Asian skin type patients and ethnic skin type patients? Um, the question is, the question is how to manage PIH in uh, Asian skin type patients or ethnic skin type patients? Thank you for the question. It's a very crucial question. And uh, I think uh, we have to pay attention not only in the Far East, in Asia, but even South America, in Middle East, in South of Italy, but uh, of course, above all, in Asian skin, that we, during our our treatments uh, and our training there, we notice this particular sensitivity to develop the PIH, and uh, to avoid to prevent, we normally use uh, particular tricks that uh, re are represented using fractional, to use HP mode, 
the first feature to enlarge the space of the dot to uh, reduce the power to cool down the scan this is the technical part. We use the DP mode or HP mode, depends on the type of the skin. This is the technical part of the laser. Uh, then as a protocol, we apply immediately after the treatment, the corticosteroids for three, four days. Uh, I prefer clobetazole is one of the, my favorite in the, in the candidate that in the candidate of PIH, even in the history of the passion. So we apply and we gently put not only moisturizers, but even uh, mixed uh, corticosteroids for four, sometimes five days that stop immediately the uh, melanocyte melanosome system to uh, be active. And then sometimes we use some creams, uh, discoloration creams and hydroquinone to prevent and to treat for five, seven days post-stop. So first corticosteroids in the first four days, then we apply hydroquinone and some uh, cream with where in the composition we have hydroquinone four percentage of dosage in the in the cream. This is our uh, strategy to prevent and to treat the further uh, PIH. There's surely a very high interest for what is concerned the acne scar management at all levels. And some of the questions that we've been receiving are mostly concerned about the end point when we treat acne scars. Yeah, the, the end point is um, in, the, in term of during the treatment is of course represented by uh, the preset operating parameters that I suggested before. And of course, we cover the entire area with a minimal or no overlap of the square area with the fractional. In terms of freehand, the uh, delicate action, gently action of the freehand by using HP pulse or as pulse sometimes, by bufferizing the, the edge is represented only one pass or two pass in the edges so that we can complete the strategy. In terms of uh, the uh, post op. Um, evaluation, if you take you through the passion from the uh, pre-operative uh, 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 preliminary interview to the results, I think that uh, as uh, the times goes on, the, the, the more uh, treatment you do, the best will be the results. So normally the end point are in average, on average, three, four fractional treatment uh, of course, depending on the, the severity of acne scars. In the deeper acne scars, we need four, five sessions with two months of interval apart, apart between the sessions. Perfect. Can you also uh, give our uh, audience some uh, indication about so the power selection criteria and how do you select different kind of uh, conditions depending on the different acne scars? Uh, in terms of parameters? Yes, exactly. Many of our uh, doctors assisting here the, the, the webinar, they want to know about the criteria of the power. So why we are choosing that uh, predetermined power versus others? Well, uh, there is a range where I move uh, my uh, criteria and normally the range, just to give you the possibility to move uh, in, in a smooth uh, modality, uh, I move in the range of power that is between around eight up to 20, uh, up to 12, sorry, as a power. And depends of the deep uh, layers that we have uh, to get to penetrate in the sense that we, if we have a deep uh, acne scars, we use a 12 watt. If you have deep acne scars, we use a stack three. If you have uh, deep acne scars, you have to increase uh, even the dual time up to 1000. If you have uh, not uh, more superficial uh, acne scars, I would uh, stay around at eight watt, just around uh, uh, 500 
um, as dual time and stack two. So these are my parameters to give you just uh, a, a trick, a tip in this kind of uh, application. Depends of the clinical appearance of uh, the patient and the severity of acne scars. But the range, to give you just a very a narrow range of application are these. Eight, maximum 15 watt, eight, uh, sorry, um, stack two or stack three, and dual time from 500 microseconds up to 1000, sometimes 1200 microseconds. Thank you, Professor. Another one. Do we combine Air Zimmer? During this kind of particular poll, do we uh, use some kind of smoke evacuator devices along with a laser? Uh, yeah, we use uh, uh, any time a smoke evacuator, of course. Uh, we prefer always, uh, especially in these times where we need to remove any particles of uh, even potential particles of virus, but even smokes. But what we don't do always is to cool down with the zimmer because i think that we need to warm the skin to get the results only when we have the risk of pih we use the zimmer during and after the procedure we only use the ice sealing gauzes after the procedure Well, uh, there is another evaluation that we have to do, I think. The how to move, uh, to, to, dig, to give you some tricks, to move with the patient. Uh, please remember to hold the end piece, especially the free hand, hold in the right way. Because I've seen a lot of colleagues, as I did in the past, because I have to highlight that uh, I have done a lot of mistakes. Now you see, as in the Congress, a brilliant cases that we presented today, but I have done a lot of mistakes in the past. I have had a lot of bad scarring, a lot of PIH. Only now I can report back to you our skills, our uh, tips and our tricks. Please, all the NPs, apparently it's a very simple thing, but all the NPs in the right way. That's good. Uh, keeping on going, talking about these techniques, uh, a few questions are relating the punch elevation where treating box, uh, box car scars. Okay. So this kind of procedure that is actually done at the same time of the CO2, many of our users would like to know how, what, how was performed. So how was the punch elevation was performed? Yes, I think that is a good technique that I don't adopt, but uh, I know a, a lot of colleagues that uh, do this. And I suggest to, to uh, use the fractional CO2 waiting at least 20 days after the punch elevation, because uh, we need uh, a little time to before performing the fractional CO2 laser system. My suggestion is to wait 20 days, one month after the, the this kind of procedure. But it's good good te technique. I don't I don't use because it's my choice, but it's very good. There's a, a few questions instead pointing to the settings for tight scars. Can you share with us a few of those? Which scars, sorry? Um, tight, as these colleagues of yours is actually uh, Tight? You mean what? Probably very small ones. Small? Small scars? I think so. What do you mean? The 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 hypertrophy keloids, small scar? We are talking about the acne ones. Acne ones. Yes. Okay. Uh, about this, the, the 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 small, I use the the following parameters. Uh, we apply eight watt, as I said, eight. 10 watts as a power, 
and uh, the spacing is uh, around 500 microns, dual time around 700, 800 microseconds, and stuck two is for the fractional. And I always use it with most part of cases, I combine the freehand during the session. First fractional, then the freehand, because I love to be a little bit surgical, not only stimulate the biological tissue to be to remodel the uh, collagen fibers, elastic fibers, and even electro, even the uh, mm, extracellular matrix. That's good. Let's move out a little bit far from the specifically the acne scar and talk about the mold removal, especially for far eastern patients. There's always a risk of recurring and most of the times might be not killing procedure. Um, some kind of uh, settings, most of the users are using 0 0.5 watts and 5 hertz frequency. Is it a proper set of parameters according to your experience or they might migrate to other values? Five watts and five hertz? Zero point and five hertz, yes. And point five? Uh, 0.5 watts and five hertz. 0 0.5. And uh, 0 .5. which kind of pulse? This is... Uh, SP or HP? Actually, it's not specified in the question. I think it's uh, we must be uh, safe, of course. With uh, these parameters, they are pretty good. Uh, we can uh, vaporize the edge of uh, the depressor scar. Uh, it's pretty good because uh, you are uh, you are not so aggressive. You can vaporize like a painting you are doing, and uh, so you can get a very smooth, a pretty smooth area. So yeah. This could be a good idea. Of course, uh, if you are a little bit experienced, you can increase uh, my suggestion to go up to 10 Hertz because it's my favorite frequency in treating and vaporizing the the edge of the acne scars. Of, co of course, we are talking about the freehand, seven inch, larger spot size. Right, talking about the technique, there's another question coming from the south part of the America that is actually asking details about the choice in between HP and SP mode while vaporizing. So what's your criteria and how do you manage the possible bleeding that might be associated to each of the two pulse shapes? Or at least if you ever use in a smart side square device, the UP in any of the cases? Well, um, uh, thank you for the question. I, I very often combine the two type of, types of pulses. In blepharocope, for example, I cut with HP and then I coagulate with SP. Why? Because as you said, I've seen, the SP has a thermal tail that is responsible for the uh, coagulation in the bleeding. So very often I combine. I use HP in the in term of vaporization uh, with a seven inch, so larger spot size, not for cutting. Uh, in the larger spot size, I use HP in the huge mass. For example, in rhinophema or huge mass, the gland, I start with HP because we need a scalpel of light and not to heat the tissue so much. At a certain point, I switch on SP if you have a lot of bleeding because HP is too cold to coagulate. With SP, we have more chances to coagulate the vessel and bleeding. Other questions? Um, if they, um, they're asking, if you can give us a practical hint on the number of procedures that might be recommended for filling in post acne and post operative scars. Sorry, because uh, I, I lost uh, the, the volume of the voice. Could you please repeat? Absolutely, yes, sir. So they are asking. Uh, they are asking uh, about how many procedures 
might be recommended for filling in post acne and post operative scars? Uh, I would say that uh, just around five or six, an average number of sessions. That's good. Uh, in some of the country, they are, uh, they are saying uh, they do need to perform histology after any single removing of skin formation. So, do you do any kind of histology before the vaporization of skin formation? Yeah, uh, I do uh, in the case of treatment of basal cell, where we have a clear clinical diagnosis, but we prefer to shave the skin in the top and send to the uh, histological examination. And this is one of the case or some suspect uh, lesion where we are not sure in the clinical diagnosis. So I prefer to perform. But in any case, if you at a certain point to use the laser as a treatment, you get approximately the same results. Uh, because you, you must be a little bit uh, uh, smart and skilled to perform first the biopsy. I prefer the shaving. So we have to treat on the top by using SP pulse for coagulating the, bless, the, the bleeding that we have after the, the shaving. Then you can continue with the HP pulse. So you see, so it's, uh, it's very uh, nice to talk about the smart side DECA because only this platform allow us to move from one end piece to the other. In the case of histological examination, for example, only this laser can allow us to uh, pass and to move from one end piece to the other. There are no other tools in the market that allow us to do this. So even this case is a really technical advance of DECA thanks to DECA efforts and improvement of this, their line of equipments, and in particular, is Matsai. There is a, a, a terrific uh, uh, technical developments, uh, even in this case. And in particular, in this situation, where we need to be uh, very flexible from one to the other in peace uh, by knowing, and to, uh, for this reason, we are doing now today the webinar, and we are carry on with the DEC Academy for increasing and improving the knowledge about how to use the CO2, and in particular the CO2 DECA machine. That's good. Let's migrate a little bit more towards the blepharoplasty field now. So are you using particularly intraocular shields during blepharoplasty and uh, are you using ocular anesthesia? Yeah, uh, we use Novazine as anesthesia, the drops. Uh, then we insert the um, metal sands, uh, corner shells, because we have to move in a safety manner. So you, you remember that uh, sharing the goal with the patient is to, uh, above all, uh, uh, to ensure the safety all the time. And uh, we insert the metal sand. You can find in the market, it's very easy. The size is uh, changing depending on the size of the uh, ocular part areas. Uh, another question is relating the parameters used in the blepharoplasty procedure. Uh, concerning the smart side dot uh, machine, do you have any recommendation, suggestion in using surgically the continuous wave in blepharoplasty? Well, uh, I think that is a very important question for whom as uh, the traditional, historical, fantastic uh, uh, smart side dot, still fantastic, we have no, no particular features, but remain one of the best in the market, even the previous one. Uh, my suggestion is please don't to use continuous wave. Why? Because uh, all the advantages that we can uh, have with uh, the laser can be lost. So um, it's very important to use SP pulse, not continuous. Uh, we must use the opportune power and frequency. 
in the sense that uh, sometimes we use even 80 Hertz as frequency. So it's very close to the continuum, but it's not continuous. And so allow us to get and to result in a good, good scarring, even with the dot. So please don't use continuous wave. Use 80 Hertz as a frequency. So allow us to coagulate and cut. SP, because we have only SP and not H HP, that is a, a real advantage of the new platform, but you can cut, you have a good incision of the scan with SP. And uh, power is normally around uh, uh, three, around three depends of the uh, thickness of the, the skin of the eyelid. The, normally it's very thin, it's 0 0.04 millimeter in the eyelids but can change on the basis of the skin of uh, each person. You have to customize the power so the ablation capability to go into the depth. Another question is actually relating to what kind of anesthetic product, anesthesia do you use in dermatology sur surgery as well as in fractional treatments? And when you infiltrate a lesion, what kind of product you might recommend to use? Well, um, uh, there is a, a pharmacy that prepare for us uh, uh, a mix of lidocaine and uh, other anesthetics. One is a short term and long term, they mix the two, and maybe vacaine and many others. Uh, but uh, one topical is still good is uh, Emla or even uh, another from Galderma is another one topical you can apply. As I said, is uh, is very important to apply one hour before, and uh, uh, you apply gently a coat, a, a very thin coat of uh, the uh, topical. Then uh, we have a second application after 30 minutes more or less, and uh, you can treat because the skin is getting number and number as the time goes on. So after one hour, you can you can uh, treat with a very very uh, modest discomfort of the passion. We are receiving really, really a lot of questions. At this moment, there are roughly 50 to 60 questions. So as the time is running up, so we, we will select just a few ones and then Professor Bonan will reply to all the others directly to each of you utilizing the email address that you've been giving uh, to the uh, to the moment of subscription. Let's move topic a little bit just to cover other practices. What's your experience, for example, in the treatment of painful plantar warts with CO2? The warts, of course, uh, are more or less pain painful uh, depending on the area. The plant of the feet, for example, are very sensitive. So uh, I think that uh, we need uh, the intralesional anesthesia or local regional, but better to block the entire area for the, for the feet, for example, the plantar wards. Uh, for the, um, this is for the wards in the plantar or the palmar uh, wards, but for example, in the flat wards of the face, I prefer to use a topical. With a topical, you can use uh, HP pulse. And uh, for example, if you have HP pulse, you can use topical, wait for one hour, repeat a second application after th 30 minutes, and use HP pulse, seven, in seven inch uh, spot size, uh, and uh, 10 hertz. In this way, there is not discomfort of the patient. Otherwise, if you have a very deep word, you need uh, all local regional or intraregional anesthesia. Do you have a special recommendation for the treatment of melasma with the CO2? This is normally the last question, but is the, the more critical question. There I think that in this case, like in Lloyd's, the approach is a multifaceted approach. So, the fraction can play an important role, a crucial role in the treatment, in the procedure, and in the protocol must be combined with other uh, laser and products. 
in our in our protocols, for example, we start to treat melasma uh, with some vascular laser. Uh, Synchrovascu Deca is a great platform uh, with a pulse dye, and even uh, uh, the Synchro Replay emitting NDEAG laser or the new Luxea or the Motus capable to emit the NDIAG uh, for the vascular component, especially in the Asian country, the vascular component in uh, melasma is uh, dominant, is very important. So a vascular laser as a pre in, in, the, in one of the phase could be a, a very crucial. After the, tre the treatment with a vascular laser, we wait for one month and then we perform three, four treatment with a fractional. But with a fractional, we need to adopt uh, uh, some particular uh, protocols and uh, some particular parameters. I always use HP pulse because it's a cold pulse. We don't, we must avoid to be too, too warm, too hidden in the, in the tissue. So we use HP pulse we enlarge the space up to 1000 uh, micron and uh, i use uh, stack 2 or stack 1 and uh, uh, in this case i prefer to use uh, the fraction like a sort of drug delivery system where i can uh, gently uh, spread and a quart of tranexamic acid that is well known at this point maybe all of you know this. You can spread this the tranexamic acid cream over the, the top of uh, the uh, fractional area. So we can exploit the channels of the fractional CO2 to, to shatter, to deliver, and to convey and to channel the substance into the depth. And so we have uh, a good result. In the post-op treatment, we use hydroquinone in the, as a first first uh, corticosteroids as usual for the three four days and then hydroquinone at least for one week other question are mostly related to colloids and a few of uh, the audience is asking about the settings for colloids and together with it what other non-surgical treatment should be combined with fractional CO2 when removed keloid scarrings? Yeah, uh, the fractional CO2 for treating keloids could be uh, helpful in the case of not so giant keloids uh, or um, tortoise keloids, because otherwise it's not enough there is not efficacy of the fractional CO2 alone. So uh, when we have uh, a modest keloid, modest elevated keloid, we can try to use the fractional alone. If you have a vascular laser, it's better to combine with this, as I said before, uh, with an interval between uh, the applications. And you can try to use uh, the uh, triamcinolone acetonide uh, like a drug delivery system using the fraction like a drug delivery system in the in the thinner keloids in the other cases we use to uh, cut the keloids with a co2 hp mode and uh, the elevated keloid and then we follow the the uh, recovery time and um, in the recovery time uh, during the wound dealing so we use uh, the uh, botox just in the contiguous area in the follow-up and then we use to treat with the pulse dye laser during the wound dealing. So we need a multifaceted approach in the keloids. Now we shift uh, roughly to the spacing in between the dots while lasing. Are there many cases in which you might reduce the spacing below 500 microns? I don't remember to have reduced the spacing under the five, but uh, there is only one case where sometimes I have reduced uh, the space that is uh, the combination treatment for hypertrophic scars. Uh, I reduce sometimes in hypertrophies uh, to 400 
combine it with uh, a vascular laser in the strategy. Um, but it's very rare to reduce the dot spacing. I think that the ideal dot spacing, even from physical point of view or there's a tissue interaction point of view, is uh, five. Five is perfect, in my opinion. And of course, it's based on our experience. Another case again. Do you have any special recommendation for syringomas and what we, we would do to avoid recurrency? About what, sorry, Simone? Syringoma. Ah, syringoma. Yeah, syringoma uh, is apparently very simple, very superficial. It's not superficial, as you know, it's a tumor, of, it's a benign tumor of the glands, and they are characterized by to go into the depth. So my uh, tip is, uh, to use the free hand, if possible, if you have HP pulse, use HP pulse, seven inch spot size, and uh, microblade each syringoma. Pay attention to the end point. You have to go into the depth, but you must be very sure because you can ensure the good clinical results from cosmetic point of view. We have, a, we have treated a lot of patients with syringoma, either, even multiple syringomas. And you have to treat as soon as possible because the syringoma spread a lot in numbers and even in size. So this is my recommendation, freehand and use, of course, in the proper way. That's why I, use, I, I said that it's important to hold in the right way because I didn't do it in the past, but not with the same results. some of the other questions we are still continuing to receive so thank you everyone for this continuous flow of questions are also relating uh, the old smart side dot and the, the sets of parameters when using uh, this kind of laser in the case of wrinkles and deep wrinkles yeah uh, thank you for the question because uh, i can answer by saying that uh, the fractional of course is the, the 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 strategy and the fractional co2 the, we have in the old mass side dot only sp with the new smart size square uh, punto touch and tetra we would use dp but even sp is is important uh, sp pulse uh, for the wrinkles we use uh, a very important uh, dual time. I normally go up to 1,200, 1,300 to tight the skin because we need to tight with with the heating of the tissue. And uh, this is in terms of two, dual time, so we are we are around uh, 1,200, 300, and uh, about the power uh, with as much side dot. The previous we stay around 12, 12, 15 power. And I remember, even in this case, a combination with the free hand. Because you can, as you do, as we do in the acne scars, where we vaporize the, the edges of scars, in the case of wrinkles, especially in the coarse wrinkles, we vaporize the shoulder of uh, the wrinkles. Uh, while fractioning the scan. So in the same session, we pass with the fractional, but in the same session, we use the prehand for vaporizing the shoulder of the wrinkle. So that at the end, we have a very uniform results, very satisfying results. In the same track of the tricks, when we're using the CO2, how can we avoid the stamping pulse fractional CO2 laser? The pixel image, you mean? Exactly, the square, you know, demarcation lines after the fractional CO2. Well, when we had the, the previous mass side dot, uh, we got a lot of these pixel images that remain for a long time. But I noticed that uh, actually uh, we, we have at the end uh, the improvement of the pixel images. So um, for avoiding this, uh, 
it's better to be not so thermal in the tissue. So one could imagine that the ablation is important. Not is not ablation. Is the the pixel image is due to the thermal diffusion in the pixel. So we must be in the average in the range that I suggested before for avoiding the pixel that is a long lasting pixel image. For eliminating the demarcation line, you can reduce the parameters in uh, the limit in the, in the border of uh, the uh, treated area. And so you can treat in a randomized manner the, uh, the contiguous areas. This is one of the tricks that you can apply. We do, we do this. If uh, we have a spray mode, we don't have any problem, of course, that we have with Punto and with Petra. Do you have any indications on how long after isotretinoin is stopped, can we do the CO2 fractional laser? One month before. Good. A few of the questions we receive are mostly um, related to practical aspects and particularly particularly what we might adopt together and along with the CO2 in a future practice to be ready to start. Well, <clears throat> first of all, I warmly suggest to attend our courses because we share the practical part, very simple maneuver. So very, the movements, how to hold the end piece, uh, because it can make the difference. I noticed that if I had it in the past when I was younger, a sort of master that uh, uh, led me, led me or uh, teached me, uh, maybe a lot of mistakes I've done. I would avoid in the past. So first of all, we try to share for the most part of our experience in the courses that DECA uh, has scheduled in the past up to the, unfortunately, the lockdown due to the virus. And um, I think that uh, starting from uh, the basics of the parameters to um, take the confidence with the machine, to know the physics and the basics of uh, the uh, our strategies. So it's very important because I, I've known a lot of, uh, I've met a lot of colleagues that they, they don't know anything about the parameters. So it's very important to know your platform, like to know your wife, maybe better than knowing your wife. Thank you, Professor. Um, another interesting question, in joining uh, body shape such as ONDA with CO2 flow for flaxidity. The question is, can we do the treatment in the same session? Well, <clears throat> we are done in one case, just to evaluate uh, the discomfort sensation of the passion. Uh, but uh, he had no sense because um, to do, unless you are obliged from uh, logistical point of view, but uh, if you can please uh, um, use an interval between the two applications. So first Onda, because Onda needs uh, two months uh, to uh, uh, metabolize uh, the fat that we remove in the stubborn fat that in the subcutaneous tissue. Uh, maybe you can even wait 10, 10 days not in the same session, because any kind of uh, uh, unwanted effect, uh, we don't know then uh, which is responsible for this. So my suggestion is to use ONDA before, wait 10 days, for example, and treat with the CO2, because our targets are different or only partially overlapping, because with ONDA, we, we, uh, our target is uh, the fat, and uh, we recall back the heating from the depth and we can tight the skin 
in a sort of upside down thermal injury because we recall back the energy and we tight the skin. But it's better to not to overlap the two uh, procedure because the CO2 tight the skin and get the firm skin uh, from outside. So the risk to overlap too much and we don't see exactly uh, what are uh, doing in, uh, in our protocols. Any special recommendation for possible use of CO2 in a darker skin type patient having acne scars? Yeah, the, the suggestion is the same. The, the tips are the same that uh, I suggest to avoid the PAH. Uh, um, you should use uh, actually the um, for the most part of the treatment uh, uh, the HP pulse if you have because it can make the difference in this case between the, the first and the prior ones and uh, with the with the H pulse we reduce uh, the risk uh, in uh, dark skin type. I suggest uh, not to use 500 space but to use 800, 1000, 800 and as an average spacing, so in terms of microns. And instead of power, reduce two points. If you use, for example, 10, it's better to use eight. If you use eight, it's better to use six. And the stack, the stack uh, could be crucial, but uh, in this case, uh, I always use two, even in the darker skin type. And the post-treatment care is important. So in the darker skin type, I always use corticosteroids after the procedure. In the post-op, I continue to apply a thin coat of uh, uh, the um, clobetazole for at least four or five days. There's a few questions relating to the stria grayish, whitish stria, and how to deal with them using a CO2 laser? I think that with the stretch marks, we have had a lot of uh, great success, success in this kind of indication because um, you must consider the stria like uh, scars, atrophic scars. So we stimulate, as we demonstrated in our studies and even in other studies in the literature, that with the fractional CO2, we can change the, the uh, tissue component in terms of elastic fibers and collagen fibers. And uh, so we pass from the old fibers to the new one. Of course, you need to treat a lot of times. It's not enough one, an average of uh, three, four sessions. And uh, it's interesting how you cover stretch marks. It's better to stay a little bit out of the stretch marks of uh, 0.5, one side and the other side, in your square area, square line. So stay just a little bit over the uh, size of uh, the stretch marks and then you carry on treating as I showed in the in the video previously. So before we end the session, one last question on the lip parameters and techniques to deal with it. Yeah, um, I repeat because uh, we have to focus on the great uh, capability to manage the different protocols. In the case of wrinkles, even fine lines, but of course, above all uh, the cords and deep wrinkles, we need to be very, very aggressive in terms of heating. So I use uh, not less of uh, 1000 uh, microseconds dual time. This is uh, the crucial parameters for the, the wrinkles. And uh, so 1000, uh, of course, we have to take uh, into attention the, the, the color of the skin. But normally I'm around uh, at uh, 1000 dual time. And then I use uh, the eight or 10 uh, uh, watt as a power stuck to and uh, uh, the uh, space, the space is not uh, 
more or less of 500. This is uh, very important. And remember, take in your mind to use as much as possible the free hand, the surgical hand piece. So you are the protagonist again of your procedure. Combine, please, the two ones, and you will get fantastic results. So, excellent job, Professor Bonan. Let me thank you and uh, really, really tell us how we appreciate your accurate, precise job in detailing to all of us the tips and tricks in using CO2 laser in our day-by-day -day practice. The webinar is actually closing right here. Thanks everyone for all the attention, all of your participation, and actually the, still the many questions that are keeping on arriving here. Send them over and Professor Bonan and, and the team will reply to each of them. So thanks so much. Stay tuned with DECA webinars to the next one for the clinic application focus AX, AY, and the newest mobile OPL handpiece for the treatment of pigmented lesions. So thank you very much again for your participation. And let me thank, uh, let me thank all the participants for your time. And let me say goodbye to the friends all over the world that I have in the doctors, colleagues, and distributors. I hope that I will see you again in our webinar and hopefully even in the future with the physically, where the empathy is important, you know. So thanks for having me today and having you today in this webinar. See you soon. Thank you. Goodbye.